the Ortho PAC hosted by Sam Dyer. Welcome to the Ortho PAC where we discuss up-to-date orthopedic topics for the busy clinician. I invite you to sit back and relax as I attempt to fill in the gaps between education, current events, and real-world practice. Live from Raleigh, Durham, it's the Sam Dwyer Podcast, <laughs> hosted by Sam Dwyer, president of the PAOS. Today's guest is Mike Weber, PA Emeritus in Fairbanks, Alaska. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Mike. How are you? <laughs> oh, you know me. I'm always looking for a prank. Uh huh. Well, I I think that's the most excellent intro. Welcome back, Mike. I haven't had you here for a year, I think, or two years. I it's been a while, so we're glad to have you yeah. back on. Well, thanks. It's good to be back. Listeners, thanks for tuning into this podcast with Mike Weber. Mike is a PA emeritus with PAOS. He owned his own business and actually ran his clinic in Alaska for years and years. And we're going to talk about leadership. That was Mike's preferred topic. So without further ado, Mike, tell us about leadership. Hey, well, thank you, Sam, and hello to everybody on the podcast. When Sam and I discussed this, I picked leadership because of the fact that I think it's very important for people to develop into leadership role. Leadership itself is, to me, it's always two forms. It's, it's inborn or it's earned. Now, if it's inborn, you're going to see that in a young person, whether it's theater, academics, sports, in the classroom or out on the playground. The leaders stand out, and, and if they're nurtured properly, they'll develop into great leaders. When I say that, though, I know this is for the academy, and from my personal experience, years ago, I ran for a directorship with the AAPA, and I'm sorry, but the AAPA to me is a good old boy club. And my opponent ran on the same platform, and I lost by a couple of percentage points. But the purpose of my running was I had experienced in the past, the winners all get invited to a great big cocktail party, and the losers are just kind of standing around outside the door. And I said, hey, you know, these are potential leaders of your academy, and if you invite them, they're going to feel part of the process. And from my own experience, after I stood outside the room, I thought, to hell with you guys. I, I don't need that in my life. And so it's an interesting dilemma. And if I were still work in the workforce, I think I'd run on the, uh, uh, to say that as PALS, we AAPA, you know, we've got the numbers now. We're still known as physician assistants instead of physician associates. And I'm sorry, but Walmart has sales associates. Car dealerships have uh, sales associates. And I don't want to rate, rate my profession with that type of person. So again, you as an academy are lucky I'm retired because I won't float off anymore about that. But back to the leadership role itself, I think having been involved with POS for 25 plus years, there's so many young people out there now that have good qualities and good ideas, and they need to be nurtured by our present board and, and, and developed to become leaders of the next generation, if you want to call it that. But not only POS, but when you start looking at your local life, school board, uh, city council, if you get the urge to be in that leadership role, I think you ought to just grab the bull by the horns and do it because of the fact that the physician assistant profession obviously is is growing. And I think to, to uh, expose it to the public more and more is really valuable. So the involvement should be, to me, at the ground level, and as a leader of the academy, and I'm talking for my personal, when I was an x-ray tech and a PA here in the state, I was president of both those uh, establishments. And what we did is groom the potential. You know, you look around the room and you say, you know, this guy or gal, good leadership qualities, you know, they can run a little workshop or do this, that. And to groom them in, you know, and of course, it's kind of like a Ponzi scheme. You... Uh, we talk them into joining, and then you give them a lot of assignments to see if they can handle it. And if they can, when you leave office, then if you're president of the academy or of your local chapter, you feel good about it because you have people that you think you can trust. Now, the problem there is sometimes those people, when they get into the situation, become power mongers or almost dictators. And again, personal experience, I handpicked one person that turned out to be a complete disaster. 
And, and that, that's kind of hard to take when you think the, you know, that you're such a smart individual. Leadership itself can be a couple of different ways. Uh, the dreaded micromanagement, which at times I find very necessary. And again, experience speaks for itself. So you got to be careful with giving people latitude and being open. Now, going back to micromanagement, this is a perfect case where I should have, you know, had quarterly reports and been a little more micromanager on that. And so I learned from it. On the plus side, micromanagement is fine. If your academy is in trouble, surround yourself with friends that you can trust. And it, it doesn't have to be a, a long commitment, obviously. You know, uh, boards are limited, which are very good. And it's a, a, a kind of a Damascus sword. Do I micromanage or do I let them, you know, like a good wild pony, give them the rein and let them run and check them out at the end of the day? You have to trust your board of directors to support you on that kind of a move. Mike, let me just jump in real quick. I wanted to, you're, you're covering a whole lot of territory. I just want to go over where you're talking about delegation. I find, you know, in my position, that can be a difficult thing. Being candid or being honest, uh, you don't have any trouble with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, no sugarcoating this stuff. How do you, as a leader, how do you delegate? How do you be honest with folks and say, you know, you're, you're doing a, you know, a subpar job here and we're not in the 60s, so you can't go dust them like you said, but how do you do that? How do you tell somebody, yeah. hey, you know, you're not doing a great job here and I really need you to do this or that? Well, there again, utilizing the entire board so that you don't make it look like it's a personality thing when it shouldn't be because he was elected just like you were. And rather than pull a person aside and, and verbally reprimand him, to do it with the entire board there and say, okay, hey, we've got a problem right now. You know, so-and-so did this. We as a board have to address it. You know, do we, do we take action or do we just blow it off and say, okay, it's a mistake on, on my part as a leader? I sounded kind of gruff about it, but I was politically, well, I, should, I tried to be politically uh, savvy with that and not offend the person too much as much as he deserved it, you know? And so there again, it, it, it's a balancing act that you have to kind of develop. I think having been my experience with academies, it's great to see where, you, like when you get elected, your president elects you have a year to learn, not only the academy, but it, it gives you that little bit of support then to learn how to be the leader of the academy and, and use a little bit uh, uh, powdered sugar when you need it and uh, kind of a uh, you know dose of vinegar when you need that too. But the one thing that I saw in, in my 29 years of stuff, we got to be careful with what I call the Trojan horse, and that's kind of like the person who runs for leadership is looking for either a personal or financial gain. And it's kind of like betting or ferreting out people beforehand. And and I've seen it with POS where, you know, we had a little problem a few years back. And it hurts to see that kind of, uh, quote, leadership turn into just a disaster. So I think it falls on the leader at the time and the board. And if, if it's a big enough situation like AAPA where they have a whole bunch of people who call you and, and, and do interviews and, and see your, your platform and things like that. And so it goes back to the members of the academy itself saying, hey, you know, we need to look at this. The trouble with a lot of the academies, as we all know, nobody runs for office. It's more like someone who says, hey, I want to do it. Okay, you're it. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much against all that. I, I really like to see competition, friendly competition, where people have different ideas that they can throw out. And then we, as an academy, get a, a chance to evaluate that person, uh, their views for the academy. And, and it, I guess it all goes back to the whoever's running the show at the time. And, you know, again, I, I'm impressed with leadership with POS, and it's not blowing smoke under Sam's skirt. It's just, you know, having been involved, I seem to do a great job of bringing the academy from a good organization to a great organization. And the numbers prove it. I can remember back one of my first conferences, there were only 85 people and what now we're 800 or something like that. And, and, and so there's leadership in that group. And I think they need to be, uh, you know, play cowboy, uh, call them out of the herd, develop them and make them the, the meanest Brahma bull in, in the rodeo. I agree with you. And, and thank you for that. I appreciate that. But I, I think if we talked about some of what you were saying, 
I think problem solving and being connected with your membership is very important, not only as a, as a leader, but also you take that into organizational skills and leadership across companies and employers, employee relationships. So I think being connected with your audience, being connected with the people that you're working for and trying to solve problems, trying to make things better. How can we invoke any change? How can we make our organization better? And in our standpoint, you know, with PAOS, it's volunteer. There's no compensation for this. It's, you know, a desire, a genuine desire to make our profession better. And that's why I think we we do a good job. I think people are on board with that idea. And it, it has to be like that. You have to be a good listener and a very good judge. Basically, you know, the difference between the leader and a judge is you're not wearing a black robe sitting up front of people listening to two sides of an argument, the arbitrator with some very good ideas and some ideas that are not really that good. And uh, again, a slap at AAP. I think changing the name at this time of our profession is just a, a, a disaster. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I think it was fortunate that I'm retired because I do know I was just stirred the pot once in a while. And again, it goes on leadership. When people oh. voted, you have to. Mike, you you stirring the pot? <laughs> um, well, let me, uh, for, for folks that don't know Mike, Mike is in the nether reaches way up in Alaska. He's running from grizzly bears, and he, he's a great guy. He, he's going to tell him, he's going to call him like he sees him. So, Mike, I appreciate you. I appreciate your opinions and sharing those with our listeners. Mike Weber. All right, Sam. Well, hey, good talking to you. Thank you for joining the Ortho PAC podcast. Please follow the Physician Assistance in Orthopedic Surgery on social media. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Please subscribe to our podcast. If this has been helpful, please take a moment to leave a review.